They have been a, uh, a split back pro team. Have elected to receive. And so checking out the backfield, Rick Stockstill at quarterback. Greg Allen at tailback. Ken Burnett is the fullback. Dennis McKinnon will start as a wide receiver along with Bill Williams. We'll check when the lineup gets on the field to be sure that Dennis McKinnon will be starting. Bobby Bowden indicated earlier he might not. Zeke Moad is the tight end. Volt to Petty and Ryan are the tackles. Brannon and Render are the guards. And Tom McCormick is the center for Florida State. And the Seminoles will be receiving. We have an absolutely perfect night for football in Baton Rouge. It's homecoming for the Tigers of LSU, and we do have a sellout. 76,000 football fans are on hand. The defensive setup, Ramsey Dardar, Greg Bowser, and Leonard Marshall will be the middle three on the defensive front for the Louisiana State Tigers. Backing the line, Dubrock, Williams, Richardson, and Malashaw. And on the defensive secondary, Al Thomas, Boudreaux, Dale, and Daniel. That will be the defensive setup. And as we get ready for the kickoff now, freshman Billy Allen. A 22-year-old freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio, will be deep in the middle and kicking off. For Louisiana State will be their kicker, David Johnson, number five, a senior. And he does have a very strong leg. So here we are, a capacity crowd. It's homecoming. You're looking at Billy Allen in the middle on the receiving side. And now David Johnson moves up. The homecoming game is underway at LSU. The kick will be taken on the 11 by Greg Allen. And Greg across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. And so the Seminoles will start first and 10 from their own 23-yard line. So we'll check out now and see whether or not Dennis McKinnon will be in the starting backfield. He will not. The wide receivers will be Phil Williams and Tony Johnson. And let's place the ball on the 25-yard line. So on a beautiful night in Baton Rouge, Greg Allen and Ken Burnett are the split backs to first place. Stock still to Greg Allen. Allen running left in, running it beautifully. 40, 45, 50. The race down the sideline. Greg Allen at the 20, the 15, out of bounds of the 10-yard line. 25 yards upfield, 40 yards downfield, 65 yards by Greg Allen. And if there's any doubt about whether freshman Greg Allen can play football, he just showed it. Bob, before the game, Coach Nick Kish said this is going to be the first play of the game. It's going to be a sweep, either left or right, depending on the field position. And you will watch the fine blocking out front. And look at that speed by that young freshman. 66 yards by freshman Greg Allen. First and goal, Florida State. Greg Allen through the middle. Greg will be hit down at the six-yard line. Greg is hit down at about the six-yard line. Greg Allen starting for Ricky Williams. The tackle was made by Ramsey Dardar, the defensive left tackle who's in at 250 pounds. So Greg Allen, the sensational freshman, starting in place of Ricky Williams. Greg is out of Milton, Florida. Right now, Ken Burnett and Greg Allen set up in the eye. The tailback, of course, is Greg Allen. The second down play, the fullback Burnett to the five-yard line. He has hit hard right at the five-yard line. It'll be third down, five, and goal to goal. The linebackers, Al Richardson and Lawrence Williams of LSU, make the play. And you'll see a great deal of them tonight. They do most of the tackling. They do that. Uh, Richardson's had 88, 85 tackles so far in this game, and uh, Williams 82. And you're seeing right there those two converging on a tackle of Burnett. One of the things you may want to look for now, Bob, is possibly cutting back and, of course, a different field position. Bill Williams and Tony Johnson, the wide receivers, third down and five. Stock's still looking, and he throws for Phil Williams, and Williams tries to make a diving grab. Cannot do it. It is incomplete. It's fourth down, and Mike Rendina will be coming on for a field goal attempt. And you're going to see some fine coverage downfield now. Stock still going to come back in the pass and just float the ball into the corner. Let Williams try to get there, and you look at number 35 going over there, and that's McDaniel. Makes a nice defensive play. Sam Restivo will make the important long step. Kelly Lowry holding on the 11-yard line. The kick is on the way, a 21-yard attempt, and the kick is up, and it is good. Mike Rendina, a 21-yard field goal for Mike, his sixth of the year in eight attempts. And very quickly, the Seminoles break on top. With a score of Florida State 3 and LSU nothing, this is the Southern Video Network. Teamwork. That's what it takes to make it today. Teamwork. 
like our six great banks working together. First National, main office downtown. Second National on the west side. Industrial National on the north side. City National on Appalachie Parkway and on Centerville Road. Havana State in Havana. And First National Bank of Jefferson County. Six independent home-owned banks that make their own decisions. Into the game. Four more for 90 yards in this game. That one was 55 for the touchdown. The Lions defense then chips in. Glenn Jackson, number 37, intercepts that pass from Chris Isaac. A field goal made it 20 to nothing. First play of the second quarter. Jordan Case was in at quarterback from North Texas State. The swing pass to number 32, Jim Reed, a gain of 33. Ottawa got a field goal. The Lions get that back plus more in a few minutes. The walk caps off an 11 play, 75 yard drive. A six yard touchdown pass to Ricky Ellis, number seven. Ellis had five receptions for 87 yards and two touchdowns in the game. It was 27 to three. And the second play after the kickoff, the Lions defense breaks in and sacks Jordan Case. Watch what happens. There goes the ball loose. It's recovered by the Lions, setting up a field goal, 28 to 3. Ottawa now desperate to get back into it. Case has had a first down. Three plays later, on first and 10 from the Ottawa 25, DeWalt goes over the middle to number 11, Larry Key of Florida State, a 19-yard gain out of bounds after six. And on the next play, first and goal, DeWalt pitches back to Key. The perennial 1,000-yard rusher has six points on this play, Key's fifth touchdown along the ground this season. Once again, led by John Henry White, number 20, through the hole. It was 35 to 3 for the Lions at halftime. And here's a good example of how things go for the Riders in the second half. On the second play, Mac Moore, number 78 of Texas AM, breaks in the sack. Isaac, who fumbles, guard Val Belcher recovers. Then late in the quarter, the Lions add a field goal. And they lead 38 to 3. And the giveaways continue. On third and 30, the punt by Jerry Organ. Larry Crawford of Iowa State fumbles. It was recovered by Billy Hardy. The Riders give it right back, though. Isaac intercepted here by the same Larry Crawford. He heads upfield, laterals it off, and they pick up some extra yardage on this one. Now, midway through the fourth quarter, second and 10 from the Ottawa 15. Joe Papa from Long Beach State's in at quarterback. His pass is to Larry Key, and Key carries it in. His second touchdown of the evening, seventh major of the season. Pop out of key, swinging out of the backfield. 15-yard touchdown pass with the convert is 45 to 6 line. But the humiliated Rough Riders come back in the last minute and try to make it respectable. First of all, Isaac off the helmet of Pete Tennyson, who manages to hang on for the reception. Then with only 15. coming in at fullback and Eric Martin is the tailback. Ashley and Harris are the deep defensive backs now for Florida State. Second down and seven and Risher will throw. He drops the ball, has to fall on it back at the 25-yard line. That ball just seemed to fly out of his hand. Vic, and he turned alertly and covered it. Look at that, Bob. Uh, Risher was back to throw. You're going to look at it right here. Risher going back. He just did not have hold of that football. Watch it take it back here, and out it comes, right there. Very surprising because it is dry. The humidity is not very high. He just did not have a good grip on the football. Gary Futch was very close to him, so he alertly covered it in a hurry. So now for LSU, third down and 17 on their own 25-yard line. We're still very early in the first quarter on a perfect October night for football. Alan Risher, the heat is on. He'll be sacked back on the 16 by Gary Futch, the senior tackle from Ocala, Florida, who made all south a year ago. And, of course, you had good coverage downfield, but you got the initial rush that time from Alfonso character. And, of course, Futch kind of cleaned up. You're going to see Reicher here now going back in the pocket. The pressure's going to come first from the right side. Take that back. It was number 60, Scott McLean. Now the punt by James Wagner headed toward freshman Billy Allen. Now Allen steps away from it. Great field position, Florida State. They'll have the ball on about, and that was Cedric Jones. They'll have great field position on about their own 48-yard line, and a penalty flag was thrown. So let's check it out with the referee. Our 
to say right now about where that flag is. Is it against Florida State or against, or is it against LSU? Of course, LSU is pointing towards Florida State, so it'll be interesting to find out whether it was before or after possession. The referee talking with the nose guard, Greg Bowser, a junior out of Franklin, Louisiana, and explaining the ramifications, so apparently it will be against Florida State. Well, Bob, if we could snap the ball right now, we got more guys on the field than they do. Two teams are out there right now waiting to see which way it's going. I did not see a roughing the kicker at all. So he has to explain the alternatives here. He's talking now with cornerback Al Thomas, number 33, defensive tackle Leonard Marshall. And of course, nose guard Greg Bowser as the Tigers make their decision as to which way they want to go, want to go with it. As we look at Bobby Bowden, Bobby talking with Cedric Jones. By the way, Vic, all of the Seminoles so happy to be coming home tonight to Tallahassee after the last game of a long road trip. They all wanted to send along their very best wishes for a very speedy recovery to Bill McGrotha at Tallahassee Memorial, veteran sports editor of the Democrat for, what, 25 years? 25 years, not only is he a veteran sports writer, but he is probably the father of Florida State football. And one of the finest football writers in America. So a very speedy recovery as we watch now. go against Florida State. It is not a first down. It's fourth down and nine to go. And again, James Wagner is back to punt. Number 41 is Cedric Jones, the freshman from Valdosta, Georgia, to be on the receiving end. Now the punt by Wagner. He has a 40-yard average, kind of a line drive punt. Jones at his own 30. 35. Cedric to the 40 and out of bounds on the 41-yard line. Taken out of bounds by number six, Hager Walden, who operates as a backup man of the defensive secondary for LSU. And that time, Bob, Billy Allen almost got to that wall. Florida State electing that time not to go for the punt, but basically to set up the wall, and it was set. Unfortunately, someone did get around to the outside and make the hit and knock Billy Allen down. Tony Johnson and Phil Williams are the wide receivers. First down Seminoles at their own 42, and the Seminoles with a 3-0 lead. Greg Allen is on the prowl across the 45 and out to about the 47, and the two linebackers, the Sam and the Walt, combine the weak of the strong side linebackers, Lawrence Williams and Al Richardson. All right, Stockstill here taking a snap there and, of course, handing the ball off to Greg. You're going to see the outside blocking there. Walter Petty getting down in front with a nice block. Second and six Florida State on their own 46-yard line. Burnett and Allen are the split backs. Rick Stockstill giving to Greg Allen. Allen to midfield, not a first down. Third down, probably about two yards to go. He was pinched to the turf by Leonard Marshall, a 270-pound defensive tackle. You know, Bob, it seems like every game we played this year, they've had big tackles. And, uh, of course, LSU is not quite as big as some of the teams have played in the past, but they do have good size, but more importantly, they have great speed. Now third and two for the Seminoles. Bill Williams and Tony Johnson, the wide receivers. They switch to the eye. Burnett is the up back. Pitch to Greg Allen. Allen, first down, 45, and down to the 43-yard line. He'll be taken at the 43 by Tommy Boudreau, the free safety, number 31. And Greg Allen off to a marvelous game. He is doing that. You know, he's a big, tough kid. You know, they, I think the program has him listed at 5'10", about 185 pounds. But he is actually about 6'6", 6, 6, and about 195 pounds. Well, that's a good-looking football player. He reads it well. He cuts back and utilizes his blockers and does an excellent job. Good block by fullback Ken Burnett. First down, Florida State now on the Tiger 43. Stockstill feeding to the fullback Ken Burnett. Very little to be gained this time. About a yard and then a defensive hit by Ramsey Dardar. Number 98, a 250-pound defensive tackle. The LSU Tiger tackles on defense are 248 and 270. The nose guard, Greg Bowser, is at 240. Now second down and eight, Florida State three, LSU nothing, first quarter. Time remaining in the first quarter, eight minutes and 16 seconds, and the ball is on the LSU 41-yard line. Greg Allen is the tailback, stock still. Good protection, plenty of time, finds the receiver broken up. Intended for Phil Williams, broken up by 27, Jeffrey Dale, the strong side safety from Winfield, Louisiana. 
and Jennifer Williams. And Bob, that time there, Stocksville had all the time in the world, as you're going to see right here. He's going to be able to look down there. Unfortunately, there was excellent coverage downfield, and by the time he got ready to hit that ball coming across to Phil Williams, defensive back stepped up in front of there, and that was Jeffrey Dale to knock it down. So this will be third and long, third down and eight as we look at Bobby Bowden. Stock still hitting about 55% for the year, passing very well indeed. Now Stock still on third and long. Throws the release foul to Greg Allen. Allen to the 35, Allen down to the 30. It looks like a first down on the 31-yard line. It is a first down on the 31-yard line. So Greg Allen took the little safety valve pass and turned it into a first down. I'll tell you what, it's hard to believe that this young man is only a freshman. Now you're going to see him right here. He's going to take that football. And you can see some determination, good eyes, breaks a tackle there. He does not stop until he gets the first down, and then he gets to the 31, he does have it. On that important third down conversion, Dennis McKinnon came in for the first time, stayed the one play, and then goes back out. Now first and 10, Florida State. Johnson in motion. Greg Allen starting the sweep. Now cuts it across the 25, the 20, Greg Allen. Oh, what a freshman performance by the tailback Greg Allen from Milton, Florida. And I want to tell you, before the first quarter is over, he'll have a few yards. He's going to be very close to that. I guarantee you something right now. He got a fine block that time by Ken Burnett, the fullback, and number 71, Bob Mercer, coming out front and leading that play. One of the things that the coaching staff wanted to do before this game was to attack their defensive left end. That was Greg Dubrock. He is only a freshman. They think that's where they can go, Bob. First down on the Tiger 19-yard line. Seminole started this one back on their 42. A flag will be thrown. Greg Allen fought to a stand-up by Leonard Marshall, number 97, the defensive tackle. That appeared to be against the Seminoles, although you're never real sure. Well, about that time, I think Bob Mercer, number 71, kind of got a little anxious to get in on that block. And he did come off that ball a little quick. So Florida State will probably absorb a five-yard penalty here. 6.57 to go here in the first quarter. Florida State has taken the lead, 3 to nothing, and are now threatening again. So they walk the five off against Florida State. The line of scrimmage becomes the 24-yard line. First down and 15, Florida State. Dennis McKinnon goes out. Tony Johnson, the sophomore, comes in as a wide receiver. Tony, 6'2", 175 from Dothan, Alabama. Bill Williams is the senior wide receiver from Warner Robins, Georgia. And now second down, 15, Tony Johnson in motion. Rick Stockstill to Greg Allen. And Greg this time will get about three. And then is fought to the ground by linebacker Al Richardson, number 51 of Louisiana State, along with Rydell Madison. Hey, that rich to me a nice football play, linebacker position. You're going to see the isolation right here. And you're going to see him starting down. He's going to see a little bit of daylight, and he's going to take it. He's going to accept it and come in and make a fine tackle. Ricky Williams was in for the one play. And now comes back out. Second down and 13, Florida State. Dennis McKinnon is in now, and he's in the slot. Greg Allen is fake to now the pass by Stockstill. McKinnon makes the catch in the end zone. Dennis McKinnon makes the catch for the touchdown. Bob, what a beautiful play that time by Rick Stockstill. McKinnon coming in and running a Z-out type of pattern. But the most important thing, and I want you to look at this faking in here by Stockstill. Outstanding. He does pull. LSU secondary on the run, and he puts it on the money. That coverage was really not that bad. 27 trying to close down there, Jeffrey Dale, but he was beaten. And Rondina's kick is up, and it is good, and Florida State now takes the lead. So with the score, Florida State 10 and LSU nothing. This is the Southern Video Network. Executive Office Supply in Tallahassee is your one-stop shopping headquarters for office supplies, office furniture, printing, and just about everything imaginable in office accessories. We have office displays set up on the floor for your inspection. Also, Executive Office Supply has a fine selection of lobby furniture. Friendly, courteous service is a part of Executive Office Supply's years of tradition. So, when you're in the market for a chair, a desk, or just office supplies, go with one of Tallahassee's oldest firms. Located one block off Monroe Street on Harrison in Tallahassee. Take the touchdown trolley and join us at Ramada Inn East. Also stop by Ramada Inn West. We're the nice people. Nice people taking care of nice people. Up 
helping Florida State a 58 yard drive beautifully led by the quarterback Rick Stockstill who threw his seventh touchdown pass of the year Eric Martin the man in the middle he starts from the goal line he ran one back 100 yards last week across the 15 and plowed under at about the 17 and Warren Hanna number nine and Mark Rodriguez who do a marvelous job on special teams for Florida State came down to hit him and hit him very hard you know, I'll tell you what that Martin is a very unusual individual Do you realize Bob that he was averaging going into this ball game I think 38 yards on all kickoff returns, which would have placed him number one in the nation, but unfortunately did not have enough to return. He's only about two returns short of leading the nation. Martin is the tailback, number 41. This is Martin on the handoff, trying to run outside, and beautiful pressure by Scott McLean, number 60, the senior defensive end from Claremont. And the Seminoles are playing hard defense. And of course, on that play, Tom Young was wiping up. As you're looking at here, you're going to see Martin coming back on a counter-type play, but beautifully read. And look at that good containment by number 60 out there. And of course, that is Scott McLean. 58-yard drive and nine plays. Elapsed time, four minutes and 15 seconds. Alan Risher, the quarterback, throws out into the flat, and it is completed at the 24-yard line to the wide receiver Orlando McDaniel, who, by the way, is the leading receiver for the Tigers. He came into this game, he had caught 23, averaging 15 yards per catch. That wasn't bad. He had nice coverage that time by Harvey playing. Of course, Harvey's going to give him a little bit of room. He does not want to get burned deep on that zone coverage. You let him catch the ball up inside. Of course, as you saw, Harvey Clayton came up and made a real nice hit. Third down and three now, LSU. The Seminoles with a 10-0 lead. We're late now in the first quarter. Five minutes, 11 seconds to play. Alan Risher, the quarterback. He's a junior pitching back to Eric Martin. And Martin will be hit by Jarvis Corsi, number 64, and Tommy Young, number 54. So the Seminoles play good defense in the early part of the going here. That will be close to a first down, and maybe they have it. And it is a first down. They do that. Alfonso Carriker, 76, came through and made the first penetration. Had he been able to make the hit where he made that first uh, contact, very possibly they'd be putting the football. But Martin is an outstanding runner. He broke the tackle of Carriker's and got the first down. It's homecoming at LSU, and it's a sellout of over 76,000 fans. It is a perfect football night. Eric Martin, oh, beautiful tackle behind the line by Gary Futch, number 79, the big tackle from Ocala. And he has had an outstanding season so far. About The coaches tell me that in all the games that they've played so far, that Futch has graded out higher than anybody else defensively. He's the most consistent defensive player they have had all year. And he is a good one. Loss of a yard, second and four. Harvey Clayton and James Harris are playing the quarters on defense for Florida State. Alan Richard swings and throws on the run. McDaniel, number 32, gathers it in. And just about enough for another first down. And he's a hard receiver to handle in the open field. Well, Bob, he's got that, you know, the good size. He's 6'1", 175 pounds. He has good finesse, good moves. And like you talked about, he's had 23 receptions going into this game. That's the second for the night. But total yards, 339 and one touchdown. By the way, coming into this game, Alan Risher, the junior quarterback, needed only 12 completions to tie the school record of 103 in a year held by Burt Jones. This time a delay to Martin the freshman tailback stopped cold at the line by Scott McLean. You'll see Scott McLean, number 60, getting up. And I believe I said Eric Martin just should have been Jude Hernandez, number 32, who came in as the fullback. Second down and nine, LSU. Now Mike Muntz, number 30, comes back in as the fullback. He's the veteran. He's a junior out of Letcher, Louisiana. And, of course, starting at tailback tonight is the freshman, Eric Martin. He started a week ago, and he is a good one. He's very exciting indeed. Second and long, Alan Risher. Still has it. Pitching it now to Muntz, the fullback. Across the 50, down to the 45. Mike Muntz, number 30, runs it all the way to the 45, a gain of about 14 and a first down. And, Bob, this is your counter option here. This is off of your wishbone. And this is what's very difficult for Florida State. It's coming out and happening to set up a defense for the wishbone and then also the eye formation. It's a fine-looking run there by number 30, Mike Muntz, and a good pitch by Weischer. Good-looking drive here by LSU. They began back on their 18-yard line. Martin gets rid of the tackler. 
and is hit down across the 45 at the 43 by Harvey Clayton, but he did a beautiful job of stripping the first would-be tackler. He did that. That was number 76, Alfonso Carriker. At the same time that Carriker in his ball game has had the ball carry the line of screws behind. We're going to teach Alfonso how to close those arms and, and hang on. Jerry Stovall, the LSU head coach, using his fullbacks as the messengers. Mike Muntz is in at the moment. Mark Johnson, number three, the wide receiver. This is second down at eight, and Risher this time hands the ball off, and what a hit by Gary Futch. Gary Futch, number 79, and that's the second big one he's made in the last few plays. And I'll guarantee you something right now, but that's one reason I never wanted to play a running back, because you're going to see a hit here by Futch. It's going to be just outstanding. He just tees off on him. What a fine looking play. He pulled right in back. He came down or filled right in back of the pulling guard. And what a knock that time by Futch. Eric Martin will remember that one for a while. That was some kind of a hit. It is an official's timeout on the field at the moment. And just a very brief timeout. James. The financial game is competitive these days. And it's getting a lot tougher to understand the rules. That's why at Tallahassee Federal, we're working overtime to make you a winner. Like higher interest rates on your savings with a variety of plans to choose from and a dependable team to back you up. Most important, Tallahassee Federal offers the safety and security of insured savings that keeps you on the winning side. Choose the association that's in a league by itself. Tallahassee Federal, for today's safest and best investments. And the Florida State defense is playing the best football we've seen them play in about three weeks. They're they playing are great. Play, Bob, they are playing extremely aggressive football. That time, Ron Hester, and one of the few times they'll blitz, and I mean, he blitzed and nailed him. On fourth and 15, James Wagner will punt it from his 40. It is blocked, partially blocked by Warren Hanna. Chasing the ball is number 38, Kenny Rowe, and the ball will belong to Florida State down at about the 15-yard line. It was Warren Hanna who came in off the corner, blocked it, knocked it back toward the goal line, and Ken Rowe, the sophomore linebacker from Cropwell, Alabama, stayed right with it. Look at Ken Rowe. Is he a happy football player? He should be happy on that, and one also happy would be number eight, Mr. Hanna. Now, he has been coming close so often so far this football season, he has finally got his first punt block. And now Florida State, a first down of the 15. Take a look here. Look at him. He comes across a real flat, and that's the way you're supposed to. If you're going to be blocking a punt, you have got to get flat and try to time it to where the kicker is going to be, not where he lines up. On first down from the 15, stock still throwing. It'll be incomplete. Over the head of Zeke Moat, number 81, the tight end. Covering was Tommy Boudreau, the free safety, as we look at Rick Stockstill. Tell you what, Rick is having an outstanding game so far. He went into the ball game with uh, 79 completions, 145 attempts. For 865 yards, six TDs. He already has added one more to make it seven for the year. Vic Cedric Jones just checked into the backfield. He's been working as a wide receiver. Anytime he's in there, there's always that possibility of a halfback pass, but not this time. Greg Allen running right in to the 10. Allen to the 5. He'll score. Greg Allen goes 15 and a touchdown for Florida State. And Greg Allen has over 100 yards in the first quarter of the football game. I mean, just what an outstanding press. You're going to see here, there are not too many blocks thrown. But what he does, he uses that tremendous speed as you're going to see it. Watch. You just got to watch. This is beautiful. He just uses speed and outruns everybody to the corner. Can you believe he's going to be around here for three more years? What an exciting freshman. Greg Allen from Milton, Florida. Now we'll watch the point after attempt by Rendina. It is up and it is good. And what a first quarter for Florida State. Now with a minute five to play in the first quarter, Florida State 17 and LSU nothing on the Southern video. After three generations of cops, there's finally a lieutenant in the Pinelli family. Looks like a strobe light night. Looks like a strobe light night. Looks like a strobe light night. When things are going right, looks like a strobe light night. Looks like a strobe light night. Strobe light. A great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Looks like a strobe light night when good times come along. Me and my good buddies here sometimes disagree, but when it comes to Ford Escort, there is no argument. Right, Bobby. Escort's meeting the competition with mileage, and that's number one in my book. Wrong, Vance. 
Escort's front-wheel drive is what pulls it ahead of the competition. No way, Charlie. Escort's attention to detail makes you proud of good old American know-how. Test drive Escort for yourself and you'll see why. This is our country and Ford is our car. I think we just agreed on something. Kick by Mike Rendina with the Seminoles ahead 17 to nothing. Picking the ball up is Dunn, number 23. Lester Dunn at the 15, and the special teams go to work. Oh, the ball, here comes Dunn. Somehow he managed to break free, and he comes out to the 30, and finally is down to the 31-yard line. It looked like he had been totally stopped, and somehow he came out of a traffic jam and came another 15 yards out to the 31-yard line. Eric Riley made the tackle and it looks like Ron Hester has been shaken up on the play. Watch this and let's see how he does escape. You're going to see him pulling the ball there, Bob, and very wide. He just takes his time, picks it up. But you know, it's so often that a busted play like this will work. Oh, boy. Number nine, lock your arms. Number eight, lock your arms. Come on, Hannah. But Hannah does not give up. He comes back and he does make a tackle. You see there is where Ron took the full brunt of that blow. Hester was hitting him from one side as we watch Ron leave the field. And of course, Eric Riley was hitting him from the other side and Hester took the main bump. 17-0 Florida State, 53 seconds left in the first quarter. The last one, a 15-yard romp around right end by Greg Allen. It took only 12 seconds to score the touchdown after the block punt by Warren Hanna and the recovery by Ken Rowe. And of course, Bob, we got 53 seconds to go in the ball game. Florida State leading 17 to nothing. First quarter, excuse me. Maybe it feels like it should be this second quarter. You, you feel so good, you old summit old quarterback, you just want to wind it up here and go home. 53 seconds left in the first quarter. As we watch Eric Martin, and the pass is away, beautifully faked. It goes to Malcolm Scott, the tight end, number 80. Not a first down, but a good gain out to about the 38-yard line. And Harvey Clayton closes the playoff at that point. What's James Harris apply pressure here? He is going to get some kind of pressure. Good hit. But I'll tell you what, this Rice is a very cool customer. He's taking some good licks back there. He delivered the ball, hit it on the money. And, of course, Malcolm Scott, who's already caught 18 passes this year, he's his second-leading receiver, made the catch. This is second down and a yard to go. Martin, the tailback, has the first down and four. He's hit down at the 48 by Tracy Ashley, the freshman from Eastman, Georgia. But it is a first and 10 LSU with 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. I'll tell you, you're gonna see Martin here. Scott McLean's gonna get tied up in a block along with Corsi, and he just explodes through there. And of course, a good hit coming across by uh, number eight, Eric Riley knocks him down. First and 10 for the Bengal Tigers on their own 48 yard line, Eric Martin. Breaks into the secondary, over the 45, goes to the 43. Safety Larry Harris, number 30 of the Seminoles, and Scott McLean stopped the play at that point. Good game, not a first down, but it's second down in short yardage. I'll tell you what, right now, uh, after that kickoff, the Tigers from LSU have just come roaring back. And that is the end of the first quarter, Bob. So the first quarter has come to an end at the score of Florida State 17 at LSU nothing. And this is the Southern Video Network. Tom Bryant, car buff. And when he's not working on them, he's insuring them. Tom's an auto owner's insurance agent. So he takes pride in the things he does, like carefully matching the right car insurance policy to the right customer. I'm Tom Bryant. There's an auto owner's agent just like me in your town. For more information, see Caldwell and Langford Insurance Agency, Thomasville, McAllister Insurance Agency, Quitman and Valdosta, and Pat Thomas Insurance Agency, Quincy. Hey, hello, Santa. We'll see you miles. Looks like you need some help, huh? <laughs> Do you speak any English? I sound Scott. How about a Coke? Just down to the next gas station. Smile. ABC for North Florida and South Georgia, Tallahassee 27. 
enter the second quarter. Risher, the quarterback, pitching back to Eric Martin, and he is swarmed at the 42. He may have a first down. Larry Harris led the defensive charge for the Seminoles. A little pitch back here to Martin. You're going to see 54. Tommy Young going to come in and just ring his bell. Nice solid hit that time by the linebacker, Tommy Young, who did make the initial stop, even though there's other people on. From the end zone, let's take a look at it from here. You're going to see this hit. Look at 54 coming across. He'll take his jump, and there's Mr. Young to stop that initial shot. So the Tigers trailing 17 to nothing. They're moving the ball. They have a first down. Al Risher, the junior quarterback, throws on the run. Oh, what a catch! Malcolm Scott, the tight end, number 80, and that one goes into the highlight film. Beautiful diving midair grab. And Tracy Ashley was as close as you're going to find him. Reicher rolling out. He's going to get tremendous pressure, but he throws. But look at talent. This is pure talent right there, ladies and gentlemen. Laying your body out and con good concentration and making that catch. First down, LSU on the Seminole 25-yard line. Jude Hernandez, number 13, is the fullback. They give to the tailback, Eric Martin. Martin met at the line of scrimmage, Ron Hester. Good linebacker. He's putting his nose in there, giving a good hard hit. Uh, we're going to come back now again, and Reicher rolling out. He's getting pressure from the inside there, number 51. Coming across, James Gilbert. He's going to deliver it a little out front, but watch this dive. Isn't that beautiful? Number 80, Malcolm Scott. You can't do it any better than that, Vic. How to make your quarterback happy. And he's 6'5 and 240 without agility. And this is second and 10. Al Risher is in trouble, and he'll be sacked. Not actually sacked, but thrown for a loss. Back on the 30, and watch Ron Hester, number 83, getting up along with Gary Futch, number 79. And, of course, number 64, there was right with him. Uh, of course, Risher, that time on his double reverse, but absolutely nothing. The initial charge, the big charge, of course, is by 79, Gary Futch. Just closed in real quick, had no place to go, so Risher had to take the hit. Risher is a very good running quarterback, and so far the Seminoles are doing a beautiful job of pinching him off and not allowing him to scramble. Risher. Oh, what a hit, what a hit by James Harris, the quarterback, number 33, who sacks the quarterback, Alan Risher, all the way back to about the 40-yard line. Just as he got his arm up to try and throw, wham, here came James Harris. Look at Bobby Bout. I'd be excited too, Bobby. So, fourth and 24, James Wagner will punt it from midfield. He hangs it high in the air. There's no one back to receive. They had the rush on, and it goes into the end zone. It is into the end zone, and the Seminoles will take it first down on their own 20-yard line. And the press, the pressure being applied by the Seminole defense tonight, well, I think the word is awesome. It is that there. James Harris on that uh, last sack. You know, this is one thing a quarterback does, because I'm sure that uh, Risher looked out of the corner of his eyes, and he saw number 33, James Harris, starting to sneak towards the line of scrimmage, and he knew that he was coming, and all he wanted to do was try to get rid of the football. Ricky Williams has played only one play. Otherwise, Craig Allen, the freshman from Milton, Florida, has been a tailback, and he has been the offensive story of the football game, an explosive game for Florida State. Ken Burnett is the fullback, and now here comes Craig Allen. And out to the 25, a gain of five, and stopped by the linebacker on the strong side, Lawrence Williams, with the help of Rydell Malazon. And of course, Bob, what you're going to find as the game goes on, that uh, Stockstill is going to try to fold that back back because the linebackers are going to start now sprinting to that sideline trying to cut off the point, and this is where Allen's been effective. So Allen will start taking a couple steps to his right or his left and then try to bend it back into the inside trying to run against that grain or the flow of the defensive linebackers. Florida State had 116 rushing yards in the first quarter. The pitch to Greg Allen. And Allen, not quite a first down, stopped at about the 29. The weak side linebacker, Al Richardson, number 51, makes the play in time to avoid a first down. And this is what we're going to talk about, the two linebackers, and they are fine ones. They're going to run as fast as they possibly can. Good hit that time by number 51, Al Richardson. But they are quick, and they are very active and very mobile. Third down, and only about a foot for a first and ten. Two tight ends, Sam Childers and Zeke Moat. 
Ken Burnett is the up back. He's the full back in the eye. They'll pitch to the tailback. Allen, first down and more. Across the 30, out to the 33. Linebacker Al Richardson, number 51. And as Vic has been saying, look at the defense. You'll see these two linebackers every play. You're going to see uh, Allen here from the end zone. Good shot from the end zone. See the blocking coming down. Good block up inside there by Burnett. Of course, they're going for the short yardage. And Craig Allen does get it. You know, the thing that's exciting about Craig Allen is once he makes that move towards the line of scrimmage, gets his shoulders square, he totally accelerates. 17-0, Florida State, early second quarter. Craig Allen, this time will get nothing. Corralled at the line of scrimmage as he tried to get outside, going around to the right. Number 51 is linebacker Al Richardson. And helping on the play, Greg DeBrock. No place to go. They went to the well once too often. 98, of course, breaking the, the his block in there and coming down. That's Ramsey Darter and makes a nice hit and closes it. Dennis McKinnon checks in. I believe it's his fourth offensive play so far in the football game. He missed last week due to an injury, but he's a much healthier football player this week. This is second down and 10, and they run the reverse. Greg Allen with the football out over the 40 and to the 42-yard line, and a good pickup again by Greg Allen. He'll be close to a first down when we watch where they spot the ball. And as you saw, as the play developed, Allen came up and got on the wing and just set up the reverse. Good block downfield. Set it up by number 81, Zeke Moat. It'll be third down and a yard. Florida State, the Seminoles with a 17-0 lead. We are early in the second quarter, almost midway now in the second quarter. And here on third and short, we'll watch Rich Stock still. He will pitch to Greg Allen. And Allen will not have the first down. They stop him this time. Lawrence Williams, number 34, the strong side linebacker, had the answer. He had the answer. And of course, you know, let's face it, Bob, they've been getting outside. You know both linebackers are talking to each other. We've got to get to that point of attack quicker. And that time, Lawrence Williams has been an outstanding football play, broke through the block, and made a good hit. And for the first time tonight, All-American punter Ron Stark is on the field. Ron with a 45.9 average for the year after 42 punts. Total of almost 2,000 yards. Watch, oh, the ball is dropped. And Stark takes off on the run, and he manages to kick it. He got the kick away. Second time he's done that this year. And he not only kicks it, but he kicks it very well. It'll be down on the 24-yard line. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that man is an athlete. He is an outstanding athlete. Not only did he drop the ball, as you're going to see right here, he's going to have trouble picking it up, but he breaks a tackle to get it away. Oh, my goodness, he took his hands off the ball, but very wisely. Oh, hang on that ball. Now, watch this. That's Curry because he knew he was going to get hit. That is not roughing. That is not roughing the kicker because the ball has already hit the ground. He is now live. And anybody can take a shot no matter when he kicks the ball. John Fritchie made the defensive hit. Now LSU from their own 24-yard line. And again, the Seminole front five on defense is Johnny on the spot. And James Gilbert is back in as a nose guard, so James is all right. Checking in at fullback will be Jude Hernandez, number 13. Mike Muntz and Jude Hernandez have been the messengers and the fullbacks for Jerry Stovall, the LSU coach. Now in his second year as the head man at LSU, and his record so far, 10 and 8. The long pass by Alvin Racer. He has a receiver wide open. Of this crowd is just going crazy. Number 33, James Harris, got burned. McDaniel just running a very simple fly pattern and just blew by James Harris. And Weischer put the ball on the money. An outstanding throw by Alan Weischer. 76 yard scoring play, and that'll put a lot of life into this LSU football team. David Johnson will try the point after. Timmy Bird will hold at the 10 yard line, and the kick is on the way, and it is good. So the conversion by Johnston, and so with 7.59 to play in the first half, it's Florida State 17 and LSU 7. Welcome to Lindy. What you gonna have? I wanna try your new hot and spicy. Here we are, Lindy's Fried Chicken, talking to people about the new and improved 
hot and spicy. What do you think of the new hot and spicy fried chicken? I think it's terrific. It's real good. We eat it about three or four times a week. I get it just about every time. I think it's delicious. It's just the right amount of spiciness, not too hot. It's really good. After two years of experimentation, as of this March, Lindy's has perfected hot and spicy fried chicken. Spice up your life. Since 1950, Nick's Toggery has been supporting the Seminoles just like Bill Smith. Nick salutes the Seminole boosters, whose hard work off the field helps the Seminoles look good on the field. Bill's busy business schedule means he relies on Nick's quality clothing to always set the tone and arrive in style. We're proud of the men and women who boost the Seminoles, and we're pleased that so many FSU supporters wear their Seminole pride in the distinctive traditional fashions of Nick's Toggery, Governor Square, Tallahassee Mall, and downtown. James Wagner to kick off and he hits it beautifully. Billy Allen is number 31 and he's going to bring it out. Five, Billy to the 10, down on the 11 yard line. On the 11 yard line, Billy Allen taken down by Steve Duhan, number 43, a freshman strong side linebacker. There's that last scoring drive. They got it all in one play. They did the pass that. from Al Risher to Orlando McDaniel. So this is the poorest field position Florida State has had so far tonight, Vic. The poorest field position. I know that the coaching staff is going to be talking to Mr. Allen, Billy Allen, that is, who returned it out of the end. There was, no, there was just really no reason to bring it up. That ball was kicked to the right. It was hung high. He had no chance of really getting any yardage at all. And he hesitated for a moment. The split backs are Greg Allen and Ken Burnett. And Stockstill will put it up. And he throws. It is gathered in, I believe, at the 32 by Phil Williams, number 87. Oh, Stocks. Stockstill rolling out, as you're going to look at it right here. But the nice part about Stockstill on this play here is the pattern that Williams ran. He took off downfield like he was going to run a fly pattern and bang at the last minute before the ball, while the ball was in the air, Williams turned and the ball was there. 20 yard gain, first down from the 32. Greg Allen fighting to the 35 yard line and stopped at the 35 by Ramsey Dardar. Dardar, by the way, has had to move over to the nose guard because Greg Bowser was shaken up and he came out. And so Bill Elko, his backup at tackle, is now playing tackle and Dardar as the nose guard. Look at Bobby Bowden after he talked to Tony Johnson and put him into the game. It is second and seven Florida State. Bill Williams and Tony Johnson are the wide receivers on second down and seven. Rick Stockstill to Greg Allen. Allen to the 35, Allen to the 40, gaining ground across to the 41, close to a first down, third down and about a yard, maybe two. And Bob, what you're going to see in this uh, screen pass here is I think that the linemen got too far ahead of the ball here because they threw beautiful blocks downfield. See the catch, see both of them going down, but they were able to get up and make the hit. And of course, that is a timing play, the screen pass. Had they been a little bit closer, who knows where he could have gone on that play. Dennis McKinnon comes in as a wide receiver, along with Phil Williams, third down, quarterback sneak. Stock still trying for a first down. I'm not sure that he has it. We'll wait and see. Foxdale must have saw something down there, Bob, that made him, because I think he went on that automatically. Possibly uh, the nose guard shifting to one side, and he figured he could make his uh, move. And LSU says, bring the chains out. We're not going to concede. The chains will be brought out. The clock has been stopped at the referee's expense, and we'll see whether or not it's a first down at the 42-yard line of FSU. And it's going to be close no matter which way you go. He's short. Well... Bob, do you go for the half inch or do you kick it away? Coach Bobby Bowden talking over on the sideline with Tony Johnson. Sending him in, and they are going to go for the, the first down. He sent in Sam Childers, the tight end. They'll have two tight ends, Deke Moet and Sam Childers. Bobby Bowden is a real gambler. We're only in the second quarter. He'll gamble here on fourth down from his own 42. Quarterback sneak again. Stock still, I believe, has the first down. Sam Childers is pointing downfield, say, yes, we have it. But Bob, sometimes I, the optimism can fool you. Of course, it's all depends where they spot that ball. Now, Stock still did hit in the line of scrimmage, and he did a very wise thing. He was stopped momentarily, and he rolled off. And by rolling off, I think that could possibly be the difference between a first down and not a first down. 
So they are going to bring it in. But I'd have to believe they've got it because that ball is about six inches forward. But it's going to be close again, Bob. Florida State 17, LSU 7. They'll stretch out the chain. First down. And that was the difference on that second effort by Rick Stocksdale. Jerry Stovall on the sideline, a little disappointed because that was an important play for LSU. If they stop Florida State, now they totally do have momentum. And Bobby Bowden knew it. And Bobby Bowden was willing to take that gamble, although we still have six minutes to play in the first half. It is 17-7. Dennis McKinnon and Phil Williams are the wide receivers. A first down play for FSU. It is given to fake to Greg Allen. Thrown long to McKinnon, and it is deflected in the air and incomplete. At last, it is incomplete off the hands of cornerback Al Thomas, number 33. Beautiful faking on the play action by Stockstill. It was that, but you know the interesting thing about that play, Bob, is not only Thomas and the other defensive back, I think it was Scott Watson down there, you're looking at it here, each one of them is going to have an opportunity to catch the ball. And I'm also talking about our receiver downfield, seeing it tipped away, the good concentration that time by McKenna trying to come back. He gets a piece of it. Stop and think about that. That is a very difficult football play. It is second and ten. Greg Allen into the secondary across the 50. Looked like he, the ball slipped out of his hands for a moment, but he grabbed it. Ken Burnett, beg your pardon. Not Greg Allen, but the fullback, Ken Burnett, stopped by Tim Joyner, number 92. But a good gain. Close to a first down. Little quick draw here. Ken Burnett going to cut it back, reading it beautifully, and he hits in there tough. You know, he's a fine-looking running back. So far this year, his average not bad. Going into the game, he had a 5.4 rushing average, and that's not bad in any league. Almost a 10-yard pickup by Ken Burnett from Brandon, Florida. And now Sam Childers comes in. Two tight ends in the game for Florida State. It is third down and only about a foot to go, and it's fumbled, fumbled by the tailback, Greg Allen, but he pounced on it, but it will deny the first down. Well, Bob, I don't know. He kind of jumped forward with the ball. Again, it goes where they're going to spot it. They're laying it down, so they're going to look over there. And No, he is short. Same decision again for Bobby Bowden. You're going to see this. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, Allen that time took his eye off the ball and was looking upfield trying to find where the hole was, and unfortunately he can't do that on a pitch play. And now the referee, Johnny Cook, says, let's get the chain in. Let's be sure. So they will measure it out once again as Jerry Stovall, the 40-year-old head coach at LSU, looks on. Homecoming for LSU, a sellout crowd, a beautiful night for a football game, and he's short by just that much, Vic. And it's fourth down again. Now, what will Bobby Bowden do? Well, we talk normally about third down conversions. Now we're talking about fourth down conversions. The play will be brought in by Dennis McKinnon, and obviously the Seminoles again will try for the first down. The ball is on the 48-yard line of LSU. 4.35 to play in the first half. Burnett and Allen in the backfield. McKinnon in motion, reverses. The pitch to Greg Allen, the tailback. Student body right. First down and more as he gets to the 45-yard line. Ricky Chapman, a sophomore linebacker, made the stop, but he has the first down. And you're going to see a hit by uh, Ricky Chapman on this outside because I thought Allen had a lot more going for it until this linebacker stepped in and just nailed him right there. Fine looking hit by number 37, Rick Chapman. Second time in a row, the Seminoles take the chance on down and they make it work. First down from the LSU 45 yard line, Stock still retreating. And he gets it away for Ken Burnett, incomplete across the way. At about the 45, Greg Dubrock of LSU. Oh, what pressure on Stocksdale that time. Well, they had a running screen that time, Bob, to the right they side. Did. Unfortunately, I don't think that they checked uh, number 4040 Brock close enough. Because I think what he's supposed to be doing is that offensive lineman is supposed to make a quick hit. Stocksdale here having to unload the ball. He's got a little bit of higher trajectory on that, uh, Bob, when he's throwing it out of bounds. That was Greg Dubrock, the freshman linebacker, who put the hit on. And it's second and ten. McKinnon comes in motion. Stock still to Greg Allen. And Greg Allen running to the right side. Oh, he is smothered by linebacker Al Richardson, number 51. Maybe he got a yard, and that's about all. Hey, that 51 is a fine-looking linebacker. He's got 82 tackles going into this game. Now, you're going to see good lateral movement here. 
He's staying away from his blocking. He comes in. Well, he made an almost, uh, what, a one throw there, didn't he? A little uh, neck hole. But he did come down to line of scrimmage to make the tackle. Third and nine, Florida State. The Seminoles with a 17-7 lead. We're getting late now in the first half of the football game. Scott's still down the middle for Phil Williams. Phil Williams, I believe, has the first down as he makes the catch, and he is hit down almost immediately by Eugene That's Daniel, good. the cornerback. But from here, it looked like he had just enough. He had that, and he does get it. Stock still delivering the football here. One thing about Williams, he is Mr. Steady. He knows where that first down marker is. He did not break that pattern across until he knew that he had cleared for the first down, and that's knowing where you are on the field at all times. Bill Williams came into this game averaging 20 yards per catch. First and 10, Florida State, Greg Allen, knifing through the middle and getting down across the 30 to the 31. Gain, I believe, of about five, and Lawrence Williams, the strong side linebacker, will make the tackle. Greg Allen, a little bit of delay coming back, folding back. You can see the linebackers have already cleared out of there, and that's one of the reasons that Bobby Bowden put that play in for this game. He knew their linebackers were extremely active, and he wanted to run and back them, especially when they get in the flow of the play. Remember, the Seminoles began this drive on their own 11-yard line, and this time Ken Burnett, the junior fullback from Brandon, doing all of the work here tonight with Mike Whiting sidelined with an injury. Pinched by the two linebackers, Williams and Richardson. You know, about the one nice thing about this drive, Florida State has had possession of this ball an awful long time. They're eating up a lot of that clock, and I know what they would like to do is try to get something in the end zone, either a field goal or a touchdown, so that they go into the second half either 23 to 7 or 20 to 7. Florida State will take time out and with the score, Florida State 17 and LSU 7, this is the Southern Video Network. Teamwork, that's what it takes to make it today. Teamwork, like our six great banks working together. First National, main office downtown. Second National on the west side. Industrial National on the north side. City National on Appalachie Parkway and on Centerville Road. Havana State in Havana and First National Bank of Jefferson County. Six independent home-owned banks that make their own decisions. Your all-star banking team in the capital city. The Capital City Bank Group, member FDIC. Security is an important word at Midget Moore Insurance Agency. So when you buy protection through us, we give you more than a few sheets of paper. Our major concern is your financial security. And our representatives will advise you of the best ways to avoid financial losses. Whether it's for your home, business, or personal security, we help you determine how much protection you need and then explain the coverage so you know exactly what you're buying. If you can't afford to lose, get protection at Midget Moore. And that's a Bengal Tiger. Third down and two following the Florida State timeout. And now Tom McCormick brings the offensive line up to the line of scrimmage. Greg Allen moving out on the wing. Ken Burnett sitting behind the quarterback. And Burnett breaks it into the secondary over the 15, all the way down to the 12-yard line. Ken Burnett stopped by Richardson and Boudreaux, but that one opened awfully quick. Awfully quick, and look at the blocking on the right side by Ricky Render and Eric Ryan. Just fine-looking blocking, and of course, on that little quick popper there, Ken Burnett picking up the first down and more. Beautiful blocking so far in the first half tonight by the right, by the offensive guard, Bob Merson, from Seminole. 15 for a first down. First down, now on the 12 of LSU. Stock still throwing for the end zone. Phil Williams has it for a touchdown. Bill Williams beating the quarterback, Eugene Daniel, number 35, and the Seminoles have scored again. And Bob, he turned him around completely. This is a favorite play of Florida State's where Stock just come back, lays it to a point, but the move on the outside there by Phil Williams was outstanding. He took a move to the inside. McDaniel took it, and then Williams broke it outside. The ball was already in the air, and there you have six points. An 89-yard scoring drive. The kick by Mike Rendina is traveling, and it will be perfect. And with a minute 24 to play in the first half, it is now Florida State 24 and LSU 7. And this is the Southern Video Network. Dick Hauser on the road with the Kansas City Royals talks about his new car from Seminole Toyota. It's a super car, stylish, sporty, and yet economical. Let me show you where I got it. Well, here it is. 
Seminole Toyota, a great place to buy a car. Seminole Toyota will be loaded with the biggest supply of Toyotas in their history. From the most economical starlet to the luxurious Cressida, you'll never have a better choice. Buy now at Seminole Toyota, 2800 West Tennessee in Tallahassee. Catch that Pepsi spirit. by Mike Rendina will be very short. Penalty flags have been thrown. It goes out of bounds, and it will come back. And what happened on that one, Vic? You know, I'll tell you what. I would like to ask Mike Rendina myself because I'm not sure if he knows. I can't tell whether he was trying an onside kick and he got too much foot in it or if it was just a miscue because he does. He is a sidewinder. And we have been informed that that was a bloop. And what they were trying to do was lay the ball down around the 35-yard line and take it and there in the screen 16 plays 89 yards but more important six minutes and 31 minutes eaten up well that's a lot of time to take off of the clock in a sustained drive very interesting Bob LSU is going to refuse the penalty where the ball went out and take the ball where it did go out so they will put the ball in play at about the 34 yard line with 124 to go here in the second quarter and you can bet that Alan Risher, the junior quarterback who hit the 75-yard bomb, will be trying to hit another prior to intermission. They go to a nickel back the Seminoles do with Warren Hanna checking in. We're watching Risher. He's a scrambler. He can't get away from nose guard James Gilbert. Gilbert wraps him to the turf on the 35, but that was the line of scrimmage. And that's the amazing thing about Gilbert, as you're going to see here. He is six foot, 260 pounds. Now he is fighting the blocker. He's reading the quarterback. And look at that quickness to be able to run down Richard. And he is an outstanding quarterback and an outstanding runner. LSU, trying hard to get more points, has taken a timeout with a minute nine to play on the first half. And the score, FSU 24, LSU 7 on the Southern Video Network. So Alan Reicher trying to put the ball up into the air, got good secondary coverage out of the nickelback, which Bobby Bowden threw into his secondary. And of course, you know, looking at that last play there, Bob, I think that James Gilbert was not supposed to rush. I think that he was possibly waiting for either a draw. He's probably responsible for draw. He's possibly responsible for the quarterback if he does scramble out to make sure he doesn't go any place. And if that is the case, he did an outstanding job. I want to tell you one thing, Vic Princey. Mr. Bowden is a rather amazing coach. To be able to bring a team back and play so aggressively and with such intensity after taking a bad beating a week ago in Pittsburgh, and his team is still on the road. The second down play, and the ball goes off to Eric Martin, the freshman tailback. He'll be corralled at the 37 by Jarvis Corsi. That's Eric Martin, number 41. Ran a kickoff back 100 yards for a TD last week against Kentucky. Mike Muntz is the fullback at number 30. Risher will put it up. And he throws it short to Martin. Oh, look at the tackle at the 41 by Ron Hester, the senior linebacker from Umatilla. And I'll tell you what, the cat was on him awfully quick that time because it was a dump pass by Reicher. But unfortunately, Mr. Hester read it and got there quickly and made a super hit. That's Al Risher coming to the sideline now because it's fourth down. And the ball will be punted by James Wagner of Louisiana State. There you see the number. Al Risher now needs only six more completions to tie the school record held by Burt Jones now with the Baltimore Colts. Now that is James Wagner, and the Seminoles will not drop anybody back for a run back. Well, they're probably going to look for the fake punt if there is one available, but then possibly they're going to throw in Mr. Hanna who's already blocked one punt tonight and maybe try to get good field position. And Vic Princey, the Florida State University Band, is here to help entertain the capacity crowd at Tiger Stadium. And now they will drop Cedric Jones back. The long snap will be made by Mike Burtz. Normally, he is the offensive right guard and the punt by Wagner. Good hang time. They'll let it go. Bouncing down over the 15, the 10. And they'll stop it on the six-yard line. And the clock will reveal... 24 seconds to go in the first half. 
So you can bet that uh, Bobby Bowden is not going to try to play field position with 24 seconds to go with the ball lying at about the six yard line. But then on the other hand, very interesting things happen. Bobby Bowden twice on fourth down when he was leading only 17 to seven, went for first downs and made them. And his offense has clicked for three touchdowns in the first half. Two of the three touchdown passes thrown by Rick Stockstill. The other a 15 yard sweep by the freshman tailback Greg Allen, who's put on a marvelous first half. 24 seconds left on the clock, and Stockstill will just take it to the ground. Natural turf here at Tiger Stadium in LSU. So the last of a five-game road trip, probably the toughest trip in the history of college football for a major college power. Bob, I can never, ever remember any team that has been on the road like we've been on the road against the opponents we were against. Three seconds, two seconds, and this will be the end of the first half. So at halftime, the score is Florida State 24 and LSU 7, and this is the Southern Video Network. When I found out that the Fayo and Company was the only locally owned store selling jewelry in Governor Square, that was good enough for me. It's the only place I shop for fine jewelry. Isn't it lovely? I had this ring made to order at DeFeo and Company. It's the only one like it in the whole world. It's our 25th wedding anniversary next week. Herb will love this sterling silver coupling set. I hope he doesn't see me here at DeFeo and Company. Great gift ideas for everyone at DeFeo and Company. Need tires? Go to a friend who's in the business. You'll get safe, long-wearing tires, and you'll get them at the best possible price. Because a friend will look after your interest as well as his own. That's our philosophy at Rainey Cawthons and Tallahassee Tire. We sell only Goodyear tires because Goodyear's number one. What's more, you'll get prices like these and the best selection within 250 miles. The next time you need tires, remember this. At Rainey Cawthons and Tallahassee Tire, you've got friends in the business. This is Bob Murphy with Vic Frenzy. We're at halftime now at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. A capacity crowd, 76,000. They call it Saturday Night Madness. It'll be a beautiful halftime show. Both of the bands are here, and both schools do have a marvelous band. An entertaining first half of football for Florida State football fans, Vic. It has been that. Uh, you know, Florida State coming off of a very tough defeat to a very inspired Pittsburgh Panther team. But they did come out, and very surprisingly, they look extremely fresh. I was very fearful coming into this game that this being their fifth away game, their fifth time on the road against a very difficult opponent. After last week, we looked a little sluggish. Florida State did. They did not have the zip and the fire that they had had against Ohio State and Notre Dame. But I will guarantee you this evening here at Tiger Stadium, they are displaying offensive and defensive firepower. And the Florida State University Marching Band has a marvelous program lined up for the fans here tonight. The first musical presentation by the band this evening will be from Neil Diamond's America from the Jazz Singer. And Eric Martin, the freshman tailback, has it there. Will be smothered across the 20 at the 21-yard line. And so we are into the second half. It's 24 to 7, Florida State. And the Tigers receiving the second half kickoff will be putting it in play on about their own 22-yard line for his first down. And we'll see now what Jerry Stovall, the young head coach at LSU, has in mind for his offense. 